I know I didn't get last week's chapter for Phantom Sphere, so I was just going to do both this week. And I mean, it, it kind of works out because for the most part last week, th there wasn't a whole lot it was hyped about because it was just following up on the stuff with Kanzaki. And I've mentioned I don't really like the guy, and he wasn't one of those villains who is like, even if he's a bad guy, you can like him because there's like, you know, some bad guys that have cool aspects. Like, I like Senju Doji. I think Senju Doji is actually really interesting of an antagonist. And uh, this dude, Kanzaki following up the first part we got with senju doji it just felt like a, a a very overly set villain who should have been like like half of the amount of time that he was actually displayed now it's just like a, a little bit drained on talking about the series because it was at a spot where i wasn't too hyped up but i did like this chapter and i liked how the last chapter ended because like we were just like wheeling out this old dude and i was like uh, let's just let's just kind of move and try and get to the next part of the story. And then, like, they kill him. Like, these uh, these guys that are connected to Senju Doji. We get a couple of their names in this chapter. Um, I, I know what well, we have. Uh, I think that the tall chick with the really long hair is, is Puppet Master. The dude in the middle ensemble. The really short kid. I don't remember the short one's name. Because they, they, uh, they mentioned in this chapter all of these guys' names. It was like... I forgot the first one on top of my head, but it was like Puppet Master, Thumbelina Ogre, which is a really weird name, Ensemble, um, I'm just little scrolling down and trying to find it, uh, oh, the little kid is Rain Man, that's really weird, because like, when I was, I forgot that he was like, really short in the last chapter, and they showed him at the top, so I figured he was actually really tall, but then going back and looking, he looks like he's like three feet tall, uh, Omen, which is the coolest name out of all of them, for sure, like, simple, short, one word, Badass. I mean, that's, that definitely is the one that I, I, I am hoping for. And looking at them, like, the, the last... Is it last two or sorry? The two in the middle. Omen and Thumbelina. It's either Thumbelina or Puppet Master that is the one that is uh, unshown. Because we see another long-haired looking like a woman. And then the one woman we saw, I'm guessing Puppet Master is the one we saw just because it's the second name. And then it looks like it's just going through a descending order. But... Seeing these guys, I, I was actually really happy about this at the end, but I guess it kind of worked out because I, otherwise it would have just been a video of me talking about my interest for these characters. Because I do like that whenever we get to that point in a new series when we meet the bad guy group, whoever, regardless if it's the overarching full bad guy group or if it's just like, we're going to have these guys for a while and then once they're defeated, we'll get to the next enemies. Because I don't think... I don't think there's any named other big villains aside from Senju Doji. Like, I can't think of any phantoms or, like, big, maybe, like, big shaman antagonists named. And I don't think Senju Doji has been given a rank. Like, oh, there's at this rank, triple S or whatever, there's five of them or something. I don't think that's been stated anywhere. I'd have to go back and look. But, um, I mean, anything like that, I'd really appreciate if somebody would tell me in the comments. I remember somebody telling me something like that, but I think it was more of a theory, so it's just kind of, it's been in my head. It's just one of those fan things that when I, you know, I've been reading Phantom Series since it came out, but I'm not, like, super hardwired into the series. Like, I still get some of the character, like, forget some of the characters' names and stuff. I don't like the main cast, luckily. Like, you got uh, Iori, you got Riku and Enma, and then, uh, what was the new girl's name? Komaki, which I was really actually happy in this chapter how they confirmed that the phantom in power is still, like, within her, and she's not a human or a phantom still technically, because that means that she could still come back and, you know, be a member of the cast, or she's not just going to be, you know, no power hanging around. I assume that she's going to have, like, the whole, like, like animal ears. Like, what was she supposed to be, like, a weasel? But, like, the animal ears and, like, the coloring on her face, as well as the bladed tail... Maybe, like, a different version of it. Either way, I'm happy to see that she is going to continue to at least to be capable. But that's one of those things I would have been bummed out about. If, like, we got this interesting character, and then she ends up getting, you know, not written out, but, like, losing a way to contribute to uh, kind of, like, the larger scale aspects of, like, what's going on. Because, I mean, like, fighting isn't vital for a character to be important, but it is a way, like, when you have a battle aspect for a series if a character can't fight a lot of times they could easily fade out into irrelevancy and i like riku but i liked this girl komaki and we need i'm hoping i'm forgetting remember like pronouncing her name right or is it komachi I, I i can't remember exactly i'm just scrolling back in the chapter trying to remember exactly how her name is spelled but yeah i i like her and i'm hoping that she sticks around somewhat like she doesn't have to be 
full member of the main cast, but I'm hoping she's one of those ones that maybe like every other arc she ends up kind of you no know, showing up, or she's one of those characters that like something happens and maybe they're in a bad situation and she pops up to kind of like add extra, you know, bring in the cavalry or something, an additional member to to come help whatever the situation is. So. Like they're they're driving essentially now to deal with this uh, this growing threat that Senju Doji has learned how to control and manipulate people to her own advantage, and it makes me wonder what her large scale goal is if she has anything. I mean, she could easily just be a villain who just wants to cause havoc and chaos and pain. I mean, like they seem that like phantoms seem to all just be base rooted evil creatures, so it would make sense. I don't think we've had any phantoms who were you know, good. It's not like, um, it's like, you, you know, look at Ble something like Bleach, and it's like, you have the hollows, but there were still some hollows that were good, to a degree. Like, I mean, like, only, like, good, good ones was, like, what, like, Nellyel? But I don't think they're, like, and her crew, obviously, like, her, uh, her, um, oh my god, Fraxion, I was trying to remember exactly, uh, the name, but, um, them kind of like their own group, because, I mean, they're, they're kind of tied to her, so it makes sense. But, you know what I mean? I don't think there's anything like that in Phantoms here. I mean, it's been mostly kind of uh, more like how Jujutsu Kaisen's curses, how they're, like, at their core, just monstrous. But they find, I guess, a, a like, a pretty much a voodoo doll at the old dude Kanzaki's house. Or his, uh, not his house. Was it his house or his office? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it was at his house. And it had a hole blown through his chest. So I'm, I'm guessing that the Puppet Master character, that maybe she can set up like a, a pretty much a voodoo doll way like if anybody tries to betray them or or becomes like a threat to senju doji like you know could give out information that just has to like blow a hole in the voodoo doll kills the guy because that would make sense i assumed that it was like somebody just shot an attack at them but this actually would make more sense why nobody noticed where they were and there was no like signs like pointing back to them because like, if you imagine somebody shot like an energy attack at them there would be, you know, either a trace of, of the attack leading back to whoever shot him, or they would just be able to, you know, look at the, like, the, was it, trajectory angle of the attack and then know where it came from and then go investigate there. But if it's literally just, like, it appeared, that would make sense of why they didn't really know where to look or, like, how to look, uh, or really, like, what they were looking for when it came to uh, who did it. But at the end of the chapter, you do see, like, this girl who's got, like, this weird possessed-looking face, and she has a a doll of somebody else so not only that there's a bunch of people and they all look really obsessed so uh, i'm wondering what exactly that is i just realized like i i don't know why but when i read the chapter it happens to me all the time just because uh shonen, when, when shonen jump started to do the um like they have their officials in english um you know off the website and stuff i i have the app but i mean i use the website sometimes too you know what i mean and they'll they'll have the the thing at the bottom of the page where you know next chapter hits february 7th i always assume that's the last page because usually it seems to you know be on the last page so i didn't actually look at this last chapter that confirms it was puppet master until you know literally like what like 30 seconds ago funny enough but yeah I'm interested to see where this character goes if it's this puppet master character i'm gonna be a little bit upset just um if they take her out because I'm going back to look at the the characters that we were shown, like the full designs of. I'd say definitely like hers. I, I like her design. I like she's tall too. She looks really tall. And then she's got that like hair almost all the way to the ground. I'm curious to know like what exactly each of these characters' reasons are going to be for following Senju Doji. Because obviously Senju Doji is a villain. Like very, very villainous. Like, I really like the, the design of her. But I mean like it, it, they, these guys have to all be really messed up in the head in order to even follow her. And I'm hoping they all have their own reasons to do it, too. And it's not like they they just do it or, uh, you know, uh, it, it, anything skipped over. I mean, the, whoever the little kid is, I and mean, that could be really simple. Just, if it's just a little kid maybe that wants to do fun stuff or something. Or maybe it's, like, going to be one of those characters where it's just, like, at the core of this child is just, like, a psycho. I do like that he's got, like, a fish, though, carrying around, another, like, a bubble of water. Anyway, other than that, though, uh, I mean, this, these two chapters, I mean, for the most part, really just what i wanted to talk about was senju doji like i and a little bit komaki but like i didn't really care to talk about like some of the other stuff that was going on with these characters like it's still interesting they're still setting some stuff up obviously and you're you know getting to know more of the characters and you know they're setting up another mission but like the the big thing that i got me interested in these last couple chapters is senju doji because well, when you have a series that's very early on it, you know there's usually got to be at least one thing to kind of you know hook 
you know, be the hook for at least certain readers. And I know a lot of people really like Phantom Seer's tone and, like, art style and stuff. I like them, but nothing outside of, like, I, I like Riku as, like, one of the main people. I think she's a pretty good character so far. Um, but there hasn't been anything otherwise that has been, like, a really big hook for me but Senju Doji. I do like Senju Doji. I think Senju Doji is, again, a very interesting design. I like that she is clearly, like, this larger scale villain it makes me think again it's like uh this is a, another like note to bleach it's like kind of like how grand fisher was it in bleach but actually doing something with that character <laughs> instead of instead of being like well we'll come back to it in a couple years and then just have him get no diffed but i mean it was never a, it was never that huge but i mean like it, it was one of those things that should have been huge i mean actually no because it, I mean, it was big it should have been the ichigo's character I, either way not too not too important for this because it's a different series, you know, it's stuff with Grand Fisher as long in the past. I'm happy with what they're doing with Senju Doji, and I, I, w I do look forward to seeing the minions of Senju Doji, because the Kanzaki dude, when they're talking about the five people of uh, Senju Doji's control, that it's clear that Kanzaki was, like, the fodder guy. Like, every time, like, now when I compare him, it's kind of like, a, it just says, it's not a, luckily this isn't a Bleach comparison. It's like, if anyone's ever watched the Yu-Gi-Oh! Awakening the Dragon's arc, how you had the first guy who went up to go fight, you know, went up to go duel a Tem, and he wasn't even really in the main group of the bad guys. Like, he was, it was under them, but it's like you had Darts, and then you had Raphael, Valen, and, um, and Alistair, and then even besides them, you had characters like, you had like Mai, Rex, and Weevil and stuff, and then you had this other dude who was just a creepy old dude who was in the very first duel, whose deck is, is batshit boring. His, he had one of the most boring ass decks i've seen but i mean he was literally just fodder to get out of obelisk and stuff but you know what i mean he was pretty much that same zone it's like yeah i'm gonna forget this guy in like two chapters <laughs> but anyway other than that they'll comment below thumbs up the video with friend the like button subscribe button and uh, check out my other videos but other than that i appreciate everyone's already subscribed thank you all for listening bye